Uh, we're going to do that in a little bit. Uh, but we're always excited for a time where we can uh, enjoy the Lord's Supper together. Uh, even if it is just the left and center rows. We're a little, little ro- light on the right side today, but I kind of talk this way anyway. I noticed that, so that's fine. It works out. Um, but I wanted to share this morning. We had, we had Easter last week. We had a really great turnout. It was good to see everyone and see everyone's family. Um, and so we, we talk about the death and the resurrection uh, on Easter. And so I think it's only poignant uh, this week to share um, what happened after that. And so in Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20, it says, The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And so I think... Um, Jesus said a lot in, in four verses, and that may be a condensed version of what he said, uh, but either way, I think the, the takeaway from this, besides the fact that Jesus is with us always, and I think that's something we, we tend to forget when we're either doing ministry church-wide or whether we're doing ministry in our day-to-day, you know, when we go to work, when we do those sort of things, that Jesus is there. He's there in those little interactions. He's there in those little moments where it's just like, hey, can I pray for you? Or, hey, God bless you, those kind of things. Um, and so we, we need to remember that even though Jesus said these words thousands of years ago, they're still just as true as today, and, and Scripture is living and breathing. And, um, but also, I, I think it's an important delineation that I've learned over the years that this verse says, go and make disciples of all nations. And I used to think that meant go and make converts of every nation. And, you know, you go out and my job is to share the gospel with you and then leave. And then you're standing here, a brand new Christian who doesn't know what to do with their faith. And so I think uh, as we walk alongside, um, like our younger ones, when we think about VBS, when we think about youth group, those kind of things. Those are specific um, places where, yes, we share the gospel. Yes, people come to faith. But then... Uh, as soon as those are over, as soon as church camp's over, as soon as D now is over, as soon as church is over, we go out and we walk with these people. And that's what Jesus did. He walked with his disciples. So this morning, that's my prayer for you, that whoever you share your faith with, that you get a chance to walk alongside them. Uh, so announcement-wise, I do want to talk about our youth fundraiser coming up May 2nd. Uh, that's Sunday, May 2nd. It'll take place right after service that day. Um, we're going to be doing boxed lunches. Um, for uh, we'll prepare them during the service bring them over we'll set up a table out front uh, you guys uh, can take them home with you um, we're asking that you order ahead of time but uh, there will be extras if you you know bring somebody extra to church with you or if you just completely forgot or if you hadn't been here the past like six weeks that I've been talking about it and you show up that day we'll, we'll have something for you uh, but the thought right now at least is we'll do uh, like chicken spaghetti, we'll do a salad with a choice of dressing, we'll do um, a bread item and a dessert item. Um, and so they'll all be packaged individually inside of a box so they're easy to carry out and take them with you. Um, and that's Sunday, May 2nd, and so I'm sure that uh, we will have a couple of people volunteer to prepare the food so that it tastes delicious and then I'll just show up and make sure everything goes well and <laughs> eat my fill. Um, but we haven't nailed down what the dessert is yet, but I'm thinking something in the, the neighborhood of like a brownie and then a, something that's not chocolate, maybe a cheesecake bar or something like that. Um, but I'll be talking to a few people about that. Um, you can submit your orders online. Glenn's going to set up the website to where uh, if you just go to our website, you can do that. Or uh, you can always text me, email me, Facebook, whatever. Um, just tell me who you are, how many you want what kind of dressing you want in your salad, that sort of thing. Uh, I'll post it on Facebook tomorrow. Um, I don't have the flyer with me. It's on my uh, work computer, but then I'll also post it here. So um, feel free to, and I'll also have a sign-up sheet here. So feel free to sign up that way too. Uh, We're excited about that opportunity. Um, Continue to pray for volunteers, because at the moment, don't have many uh, youth volunteers, that is. Um, but uh, I'm still very excited about camp. I've had people asking me about camp, and I said, you show up at church, we'll pay for camp, and so far, 
camp's going to be cheap this year for us. Um, <laughs> but um, continue to pray for that. And then as well, I saw our uh, theme for VBS, and so I'm excited for that. And I think that's going to be good, and we're going to kind of adjust that. And, and it'll look a little different this year, but I think it'll be a blast. And so I can't wait to hear more about that. Um, but I think that's all for me. So I'm going to go ahead and pray, and then we'll get started. Father, thank you for um, this morning. Thank you for Sundays, Lord, where we've set aside a time and our busy schedules and our weeks um, where we just come and we just spend a little time with you. And we, we pray that this isn't the only time we spend with you, but this time is important because this is community, this is fellowship. We see the smiling faces when we walk in the door. We get the reassuring hugs when we've gone through tough times. This is family. This is a, a place where we shrug off those burdens and we throw off the false faces and instead we worship together Lord, and um, we're so thankful for the resurrection that we celebrated this week and now as we think about what that has meant for the last couple thousand years we want to take your gospel and we take it to the world and we want to share that with people and then we want to walk alongside them to see that they grow and they become the kind of people that you want them to be and so we pray that this church that first baptist valley view will impact our community in, in a way that is indescribable, not in a way that we just did good things for people, but instead that we truly changed the way that people live because of your gospel, Lord. We love you so much. We thank you and we praise you. And now that you would just come into this place during this time of worship, in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, hopefully... You all picked up uh, elements in the entry for the Lord's Supper. Uh, if you did not, we will make sure that we can get them to you. Uh, the way that we've done this over uh, kind of COVID time, it's two cups. Bread is in one, juice is in the other. You can put them in the, the hymnal rack in front of you there. There's some cup holders there. And then in just a few minutes, we will be observing in this time. Uh, Lord, so glad that you're here. Uh, Houston, I mean, he, he wasn't uh, aware, but there was a VBS kind of coordinating meeting this last week. And uh, a great group that gathered there. And so Vacation Bible School is set. We are set to do Vacation Bible School this year, uh, June 15 to 18. And so that's the middle week, 14 to 18. Thank you. I can't count. Give me a break. Um, and so, but uh, 14 to 18, right here, 9 to noon. Uh, if you are interested, you want some more information, you can talk to Amber Davis, and uh, she'll get you lined out there. There's actually a sign-up sheet for help, or if you just need some more information, it's on the, the tables in the foyer. And also, that's a reminder, I hope, that uh, we are still trying to work on uh, in-house church directory. If you haven't had a picture made of you or your family, uh, Chris does that immediately after the service in the entryway there. Uh, they look really nice. It's not a big formal fancy thing. You don't have to, we just need to see your face. And if you're here, then your face is fine. Yes. The way it is right now. Yeah. So kind of track her down after she'll be in the foyer back there and can have pictures made. There are forms on the table back there, we're updating our you know, information database so we can make sure that we can contact everybody and then we're producing that information for in-house uh, you know, for us to get to know each other a little bit better. And so that's still happening and on that table in the foyer where that was headed is a sign-up sheet uh, for Vacation Bible School. I'm excited about what's going to happen there uh, and so uh, we're going to do uh, an online registration and really encourage that to happen. That will be up also on our website this next week uh, so you can register your kids so that we can have a, a real good idea of what's going to be happening uh, in terms of uh, you know, personnel that we might need and those type of things. Uh, and so you can register online beginning about Wednesday if you want to look at that. And that's just go to our website, First Baptist Valley View .nucleus .church, uh, and uh, it, it'll be there. And you'll be able to sign up, you get, uh, put all the information there, and we'll be the only ones that will see that until we produce class lists for our teachers. Oh, well, I I'm excited about that. Thankful for uh, those that are, have already, we've got a, a good group, but we still need helpers that. It's just over two months away, <laughs> Vacation Bible School. And so I wanted you to be aware of that. 
Okay, if everybody has their elements and everything, I want us to continue to worship this morning as we sing together. Thank you. All right. No excuses now. These are ones you know. Let's stand together. <clears throat> been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Amen. To God be the glory, great things hath done and loved he the world that he gave us his son who yielded his life and atonement for sin and opened the life gate that all may go in praise the lord praise the lord let the earth hear him Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory, great things He hath done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer the promise of God the vile blessed offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives praise the Lord praise the Lord let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. He hath taught us great things he hath done, and great our rejoicing. 
sing through Jesus the Son, but purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our victory when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he hath Done. Amen. You may be seated. I'll tell you a quick story here. See if I get a microphone. I'll tell you a quick story here. Um, a lot of you may remember my little story that my grandmother is in, a, she's 95, and she's in a, an Alzheimer care facility. And she doesn't remember a whole lot, but I call her every morning and sing with her because she remembers lyrics to songs and I always give her the chance I say can you think of a song you would like to sing and without fail the one thing the one song that she remembers because she always asks me to sing it is to God be the glory great things he uh, hath done uh. and if that was the only thing you could remember <laughs> that might be the one And now I'm going to make a fool of myself for Jesus. Amen. And I'm hoping that as you listen to it, that you'll remember it because it's going to be something familiar, I'm hoping. that you will sing along, because I'm going to need all the help that I can get. <laughs> Is it coming through? All right. Oh, they tell me of a home. Oh, 
tell me that he smiles on his children there, and his smile drives their sorrows all away. And they tell me that no tears ever come again in that lovely land of unclouded day. very much, Chris. Uh, a truth that I hope that each of us knows, counts on through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, today, as Houston had already talked about, uh, I mean, is this is the week after Easter. You, all sorts of different things kind of happening. Um, I don't know if if you can see what these are, um, they don't look kind of normal well, for a couple of reasons, but uh, these are these are fruit punch peeps. <clears throat> okay? Yes. Now, not the yellow ones. <clears throat> okay. Um, these are fruit punch. They, they taste pretty good. Yes. I, I like them. Uh, but now, these... Um, <laughs> These little peeps, they looked great last Sunday. <laughs> uh, today, they just uh, kind of like um, some of us, a little worse for wear. <clears throat> uh, you know, we think about, even as Houston talked about it, uh, Easter Sunday, we get all kind of dressed up, can get excited about it. We... Uh, you know, are eager to, to come, look pretty, um, you know, and, and happy for Easter. And then, you know, just one week later, some of us, you know, kind of look like this. <clears throat> because, uh, you know, the, the world has, has happened. Not so pretty, not so dressed up, not so happy. Perhaps. That's not everybody. I'm not saying that. Uh, but for many, uh, it, it is. It's, a, it's just a, the last few weeks, I mean, have been something else in our nation and around the world. And uh, I was just, I saw these on the counter uh, this morning and said, you know what? I know some people that uh, look like that, that feel like that. And uh, so I want us to think about uh, the message that we have in relation to us as followers of Jesus Christ and as ones as we celebrated Easter last Sunday. But I, I want us to, uh, today I want us to, a week later, remember. I want us to give thanks. I want us to partake. And then I want us to, to celebrate God's love for us that we see and that we will experience through the taking of the Lord's Supper today, communion. Often we do this before Easter, many years though, we've done it in the week following Easter. And, and what I wanted us to do is for us to remember what I talked about last Sunday 
as we live every day. It's not just a message for Easter Sunday. The reality of life in Jesus Christ is that the resurrection changes everything. And that means today, not just Easter Sunday. The resurrection changed everything. The resurrection changes everything. And every day following Easter is in that post-resurrection new world. And every day as we think about Easter, as we think about resurrection, as we think about uh, the sign of God's love, what he showed to us through his son Jesus Christ, Jesus' passionate love for his father and for us as he willfully gave his life for you and for me. We need to, to remember that every day in this new world that was forever changed by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, every day is a new day. There's a passage in 2 Corinthians, a verse there, chapter 5, verse 17, that says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, Paul writes, the new creation has come. If anyone is in Christ, if anyone has a relationship with him, if anyone uh, is in that, that life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ, says the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. Every day is a new day. Now, that doesn't mean that, uh, you know, every new day that... Uh, Things are always going to be different or always going to be better or, or anything like that. But every day is a, is a new day from him. It's part of this new creation that comes because of Christ's death and resurrection. He showed us God's love. He showed us this new creation that comes that he has promised. And so every day is a new day in this world that was forever changed by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And for us to greet that new day, that doesn't mean that we put on a facade and pretend that everything's okay. But it does mean that we recognize, okay, this day, brand new, hasn't happened yet. I get to choose. I get to make choices of what's going to happen this day in my relationship with friends, family, coworkers, those that I come in contact with. In my relationship with God himself through his son, Jesus Christ, I get to choose this day how it will move forward. I am not in control of much, but I do get to choose. I am in control of how I choose to greet the day. And I'm not going to pretend that then, like I said, it's a call for us to put on a facade. Some days stink. Some days hurt. Some days make no sense whatsoever. And I get to choose to say, okay, God, I got to trust you to get me through. Some days we can wake up and say, good morning, Lord. And some days we wake up and say, good Lord, it's morning. And even on those days, God's right there with us. That's the other thing, that this, this every day is a, a gift from God. Oh, in, in Ephesians chapter 2, if you want to open your Bibles, you certainly can. Ephesians chapter 2. Beginning in verse 4. Talking about this sense, this understanding that every day is a new day. Ephesians chapter 2 beginning in verse 4. Paul writes, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in transgressions, it's by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness 
to us through Jesus in Jesus Christ. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this isn't from yourselves. It's the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Every day is a gift for us to walk with, to follow, to walk alongside this one who loves us and gave himself for us. It is by grace you have been saved through faith there in verse 8, not from yourselves. It's the gift of God. His salvation is our gift. And that salvation came through his son, Jesus Christ. And that we realize we, we are, I mean, in, in a real sense, I mean, every day is that, that fresh start and that, that walk with him through salvation. And so every day, as we think about, you know, post-Easter, post-resurrection, it's a new day, it's a gift from God, and every day offers hope. Hope. Now, you guys have heard my definition of hope for years. When I think about hope, it's not, oh, I hope today is going to be a good day. Oh, I hope that I get to see Andy sometime this week. Okay, not talking about, you know, just wishful thinking. Hope, that confident assurance that God is going to do what he said he's going to do. That is our hope. And every day we can rest in that hope. You're there in Ephesians Flip back just a few pages to Romans. Romans chapter 5. We spend a little bit of time there. And with this passage, in thinking about the call that God has on our lives, really for us to be unoffendable. <clears throat> but here in Romans chapter 5, I want us to think about this hope that we have. Romans chapter 5 beginning in verse 1. Therefore, now if you go back to chapter 4 and you look up there the last few verses, you know, it's talking about uh, Abraham and there he was delivered over to death for our, and talking about Jesus, uh, you know, who raised our Lord Jesus from the dead, he was delivered over to death for our sins, was raised up to life for our justification. And for chapter 5 begins, therefore, because of this, since we've been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we've gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. That, that's a staggering couple of verses there. We've been justified through faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And what did he say? We've gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. This grace. The fact that God gives us what we need and not what we deserve. Grace. The fact that he loves us no matter what. Grace that you can't do anything to earn any more of his love. You can't do anything to make him not love you. Grace. And the grace that we stand in now through our faith in this one who gave himself for us, who defeated death. Grace. And continuing in verse 2, we boast in the hope of the glory of God. We boast in the hope of the glory of God. N not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. Now, do not misread Paul here. Even when he says, though, he says, uh, we glory in our sufferings 
that's not, well, oh, we're so thankful to God for allowing us to suffer there. It's, it's, it's a recognition that even in our suffering, God is at work. We can meet him there. And because suffering, he says, suffering, you don't just suffer for suffers, suffering's sake. Suffering produces perseverance. The ability to keep on keeping on. Perseverance produces character. And character produces hope. And continuing in verse 5, hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. We're not alone. We're not alone. Verse 6, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Now, sometimes we want to think Christ died for the ungodly. That's them. That's, that's not us. That's us. Christ died for all of us. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But, wonderful word, verse 8, God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We've talked about that for three or four weeks in thinking through God's passionate, personal, powerful love for us that we see in Jesus Christ. God showed us. God exhibited God demonstrated his love for us. How? While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Continuing verse 9, Since we now have been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled through Christ's death there, shall we be saved through his life? Not only, this, not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, whom through we have now received reconciliation. As I read that passage, I mean, it really was just brought home to me that every day offers hope. That hope is found in God himself. That hope is found in the God who gave himself for us through his son. That hope, that confident assurance that God is going to be true to what he said is right there in Jesus Christ. We can count on it. We can claim it every day. A new day. Every day is a, a, a day that we can live for him. It's a gift from him. And every day offers hope. And every day provides opportunities for us to love God back. Through worship, through service to others, through rest and taking care of yourself, that is a way to love God back. In Colossians, if you want to turn over there, Colossians chapter 3. We find this, these words... Beginning in verse 12. And I'm going to read from the message. And I was thinking about the fact that every day provides us opportunities to love God back. Colossians chapter 3 verse 12. So... Chosen by God for this new life of love, dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you. Compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, discipline. Be even-tempered, content with second place, quick to forgive an offense. Forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you, and, and regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It's your basic, 
all-purpose garment. Never be without it. And let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, in step with each other. None of this going off and doing your own thing. And cultivate thankfulness. Let the word of Christ, let the, the message have the run of the house. Give it plenty of room in your lives. Instruct and direct one another using good common sense. And sing. Sing your hearts out to God. Let every detail in your lives, words, actions, whatever, be done in the name of the Master, Jesus. Thanking God the Father for every step of the way. Every day provides opportunities for us to love God back. And you're the only one that knows what those opportunities are. Those opportunities will come, but you will recognize them only as, as you look for them. Sometimes it's subtle. Sometimes it's a, a, almost a kick in the pants from God saying, did you see this? Because sometimes we overlook. Jesse, he came up to me this morning and he said, basically, look at me. And so I did. So Jesse, it's great to see you. And then he said, I shaved my head. And I said, I didn't know. You look great. I wasn't looking for that. Okay? Almost like the Sunday that I stood up here after about eight months of this bushy white beard and it was gone, and I didn't hear from anybody. <clears throat> <laughs> what I'm saying in all of that is almost that we find what we're looking for. If we anticipate those opportunities for us to love God back, they come. We see them, we notice them, and we're ready to do something about it. We're ready to do just that. And so today, I talking to myself, encouraging myself, but I encourage you to, to give thanks, to give thanks for this, this God who loves you and gave himself for you because of who he is. I don't even remember Tony sharing that last Sunday, that beautiful song. It's not because of you know, what I want, well, because of what you've done, but because of who you are that we're called to love him. And so I, I encourage each one of us today to, to love him, to worship him, to celebrate him, to be thankful for him simply because he is God. That we need to be thankful to God for this new day that he has given us that comes after winter. For many thinking about these peeps this new day you may not have welcomed this day saying thanks lord for another day because sometimes you know days they're hard and you may not want another one right now but we need to be ones who do thank him for the new day that he has given us uh shortly after the pandemic began i got a text message from houston and he wanted me to listen to a song, a song that had affected him. And he thought that I would appreciate it and that perhaps I even needed it at that time as well. Oh, how right he was. And so this morning, right now, I want us to listen to this song and think about the fact that we are called to be thankful for this day that God has given us. The singer's name is Ken Renzema, R-E-N-Z-E-M-A, Renzema, and the song is entitled Springtime. <laughs>
Springtime, how appropriate today. We will sing a new song, because death is dead and gone with the winter. We will sing a new song, let hallelujahs flow like a river. We're coming back to life, reaching towards the light. Your love is like springtime, new life. We should be thankful that he has given us new life. And then today, we're going to share together this time of remembrance of what it cost God to have a relationship with him through his son, Jesus Christ. And we're going to share this together. If you have your cups, the bread is, is on the bottom. If uh, you, know, you can separate that out. But as we think about this love that cannot be taken away, what it cost him. And Paul, he wasn't there at that last supper, but he did encounter Christ. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he's talking to this Corinthian church that was having real problems. In verse 23, he said, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. He said, I received this from the Lord. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's pray together, and then we will. Larry Tips, would you lead us as we, we pray in thanking God for the gift of his son?
This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Paul continues. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Kyle Davis, would you lead us as we pray together before we take this cup? This cup is the new covenant in my blood, Jesus said. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And I also want to encourage you to take the time now, throughout this day, throughout the coming days, to worship this God who walks with us through every circumstance that comes our way, every situation, every uncertainty that we may have. And the worship doesn't mean that you belt out in song necessarily. It may just be that you're, you, you allow your mind to go to him in whatever circumstance it may be, with thankfulness, with joy, even with question. You can worship God in saying, God, I don't understand this. I can only make it through as I, I trust you. My hope is in you. This stinks, but I'm, I'm staying with you. That's worship, friends. Almost half the Psalms are laments, <laughs> if you go read them. And that was Israel's hymn book. Uh, he can take that, but let's be ones who worship. And so that's the song that I want us to, to end our time with together this morning. It's a song entitled, The Way. We've sung it before. We haven't sung it in a while. But it begins, it says, through every battle, through every heartbreak, through every circumstance, I believe that you're my fortress, you're my portion, you are my hiding place. And how can we say this? I believe you're the way, the truth, the life. And so that's what we're going to sing. Let's stand together and let's sing this as we prepare to go into a world having given thanks, having partaken together, having partook together this, uh, the Lord's Supper here. And as I pray that we are energized to live for him through the Holy Spirit who is in our lives. Through every battle, through every heartbreak, through every circumstance, I believe that you are my fortress. You are my portion. You are my hiding place. Oh, I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. I believe are the way, the truth, the life. I believe you are seen through every promise, through every breath I take. I believe that you are the fighter, you are protector. You are the one I love, and I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. I believe you are the way, the truth, 
the life I believe you are. Oh, you are. Oh, you are. It's in the new horizon, and I'm set on you. And you meet me here today with mercies that are new. All my fears and doubts, they can all come true. Because they can't stay long when I'm here with you. It's a new horizon and I'm set on you. And you meet me here today with mercies that are new. All my fears and doubts, they can all come true. Because they can't stay long, and I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. I believe. And I'm set on you, and you meet me here today with the seas that are new. It's a new horizon, and they'll all come to because they can't stay long. But I believe you are the way, the truth, the love. I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. I believe you are. Amen. Let's pray together and we will go. Father, thank you for the love that we know through your son, Jesus Christ. And thank you. We truly can't say thank you for walking with us. You are the way, the truth, the life. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, showing us the way. Giving his life. Father, we thank you for the truth that you shared with us. And that truth is grounded in your passionate love for us. Let us be ones that the world looks at and says, man, those people love each other. And they love the people around them. I want what they have. Prepare us to be ready to share. Thank you for even those times that uh, were uncertain. And I say thanks because uh, I pray, Father, I know in my own uncertainty that I'm, I'm drawn to you. So, Father, let us then be ones who share with the world the ultimate truth of life and hope through Jesus Christ. Not in a judgmental attitude, Father, with love. Your relationship with us begins with love, not condemnation. For even while we were sinners, Christ died for us because of your love. Take us from this place, I pray, Father, with hearts that are ready to encounter you in ways that perhaps we haven't. We know we've got people around us that are hurting, people that have lost loved ones that are uncertain. Father, we give this time to you, lift them to you. Let us be ones that go beyond just saying we want to help and doing something about it as you guide and direct. We love you. Thank you for being right here. Take us home or to wherever we may be going safely, Father, is our prayer. And let us be ready to live for you. We will love you. Have a blessed